Waterhouse and Dodd is uh, represented here at Art Hamptons, and I'm with Ray Waterhouse, who joins us from London, England. Welcome to uh, Thank the you Hamptons. Very much. I flew in yesterday, and I'm loving the weather. Well, <laughs> the Hamptons and Art Hampton has turned out to be a major event, isn't it? I'm very impressed. I mean, people maybe not don't know much about it here, but I'm an exhibitor at Maastricht, which is the greatest and most important art fair in the world. And uh, it's, it's actually very impressive what Rick has done here. It's, it's a major fair, and I think it'll be uh, an important part of the art scene in the northeast coast. And I think people will fly in from the west coast, too. Well, people will be coming in to look at your works and what you've collected. We're in front of a very striking piece, but there's a good local story associated That's with That's right. Um, it was chosen by Dan of Dan's papers to feature on his front cover of today's edition. So we're very proud and um, interested to have that. It's by Tom Wesselman, the great American artist who died in 2003. Uh, he's been big news lately because a year ago he made $5 million at auction, which was um, a staggering increase on his previous record. And then this year he made over $10 million at auction for, a, for an original. This is a print. It's one of his most famous prints. It's actually called Bedroom Face with Orange Wallpaper. And uh, it's from the 1980s. And uh, we're hoping very much that somebody here will like it because uh, of its feature on Dan's papers. It's quite striking. And we have another Westerman here, which is uh, it's a metallic cutout. He was famous for this. He sort of created this medium. This is um, uh, a more unique piece. This is 75,000, and uh, I really love this, and I hope people will too. The technique is something that I haven't seen before. What is this called? Well, it's the, the technique is it's metal. It's, it's a cutout metal. So the white here is literally the background. So it, there is this very delicate thin outline which is in metal and then it's attached to a background uh, so I mean it could theoretically be on a different colored background if one wanted but I think white suits it better so Ernie I just thought I ought to mention that we actually have three different types of pictures here we have uh, the contemporary where we are now um, we have what we call modernist paintings which is really 1920 to 1960 and we also have some impressionist and post impressionist but as we're here in the contemporary let me just tell you a bit about this amazing watercolor by a British artist called Mark Quinn and um, I hope people can recognize it's of Kate Moss she modeled her face but actually it was an expert yoga um, person who did the pose and this particular piece is very famous because this is a study for a sculpture and um, it's exhibited in in a public place in Britain and it's been sold in the US as well and the artist again the artist is Mark Quinn now he he is famous both famous and infamous because in the 90s Charles Saatchi the great um, British collector of young British artists bought a sculpture by Mark Quinn called self-portrait and it actually contains Quinn's own blood and it became national news when a house that Saatchi was renovating the builders turned off the fridge and so allegedly the blood seeped out because it had to be kept at, kept at a certain temperature and if we just sweep to the left a little we're showing um, a young English artist Sarah Jeffries we have a show in our gallery in London at the moment by her um, we've got four pieces here these are very inexpensive she's a rising star on our view these are from five thousand dollars to uh, ten thousand dollars original oils and these would also be called contemporary correct I mean she's 25 26 years old so she's um, absolutely contemporary Mark Quinn was born in uh, 1963 the and images then, are so vivid. I know. She actually works from, um, she takes some of her inspiration from magazines and does collages and then works them up into paintings in a different form. And then the one on the left here, um, 
Sorry, just to your left again, these paintings by Jeremy Duncan. These are of uh, New York scenes. He's also a British artist. He's about 40 years old. We've given him a couple of shows in our gallery, and we've sold many pictures of his work to New Yorkers because he, he takes his inspiration from f fire escapes, facades of buildings, and adds a very personal artistic touch. What you see in the paintings is not what he saw. He's interpreted and added, but I think they work tremendously well. As a lifelong New Yorker, <laughs> I've been surrounded by fire escapes, <laughs> and I've never seen them in this context. Well, I think he's added some color here and there, and uh, it's an interpretation. But some he did a the first picture we ever saw by him was of the courts of justice in New York. He came into the gallery, you know, a very meek gentleman, and said, you know, will you give me fifteen hundred dollars for this? And we actually gave him five thousand because we thought it was so good. And through that, we started a relationship when we uh, act for him exclusively. And his name again? Jeremy Duncan. And these are priced in the region of. Um, eight nine thousand dollars only the last um, artist we're representing here in the contemporary field is Graham Dean he was born in 1953 and he works exclusively in watercolor and uh, he works on very very hard handmade Indian paper when we first met him we were shocked because he took the uh, the paper out of his portfolio and he literally kicked them um, and with paper that was kind of shocking but they're extremely tough and he has this extraordinary technique of painting figures within figures. You've probably seen we've got I think one of the biggest booths at the fair and I've got three wonderful American paintings. The one we're looking at now is by Georgia O'Keeffe, a fantastic small still life. And then moving to the right we have an extraordinary Milton Avery, uh, a seascape which we thought might appeal to people here with the sea so prominent. And finally, a Man Ray, a rare oil painting by Man Ray, who's most known for photography. I love this landscape, and um, I won't reveal the prices, but these are all in the half million dollar range. Then moving further to the right, we've got uh, some Impressionist and Post-Impressionist paintings. George de Spagna, Louis Valter, uh, and one other American artist, actually, I'd forgotten. Um, to your right, we, and higher up, we have Edmund Cookwell, who was born in Pasadena and lived most of his working life in Germany and came back to California um, for his later years. But this is a view on, the, uh, on a lake near Munich. And below it, we have a painting by the daughter-in-law of uh, Claude Monet. And there's a funny story with this. We showed this at the International Fine Art Fair at the Armory in New York. And the vetting committee came round and were very impressed with, with this picture. And then one of them came up to me afterwards and said, how much is your money? And he, he ridiculously thought it was by Claude. When instead of being, uh, uh, this is 85,000, it would have been you know, 8.5 million. The family influence. That's right. And we have to the right, uh, above a watercolor by Pierre Bonnard, a typical nude scene. He, he painted predominantly his wife, Martha, getting into or out of a bath or getting dressed. And below that, we have uh, an exquisite small watercolor by Renoir, which uh, I think is in the region of $140,000. Beautiful condition, exhibited in many museums and well documented.